What's up, Cream Heist? Welcome to another Criminology Educational video. And for today, we will be discussing Introduction to Criminology. So before we start, let me introduce myself. I am Sean Francis Sandiego, also known as The Professor. So just to give you um, a background or a disclaimer, so The Professor is just a screen name got from the movie or the Netflix series Money Heist. So what to expect into our video discussion? So first is I would be discussing the Uniform Crime Report and Crime Mapping utilized by the Philippine National Police. Second is who are the pioneers in studying victimology, classifying the different types of victims, and the basic theories in victimization. So medyo uh, magpo-focus tayo ngayon kay victimology subject or victimology as a part of introduction to criminology. So let us first discuss what is a uniform crime reporting. So from the word itself pa lang, si uniform crime reporting um, shall be established in every police station for monthly and annual reports on the case handled and persons arrested by the police station to include cases reported. So si uniform crime reporting or uniform crime report, so from the word itself, uniform, ibig sabihin may iisang formula or may uh, iisang pattern lang sila na sinusunod in each and every police station. And the uniform crime report can be classified monthly and annual. So pag sinabi nating annual, it is yearly. So merong monthly uniform crime report and merong annual or yearly uniform crime report. So ano ba yung mga Alaman ng Uniform Crime Report. These reports shall follow the prescribed classification of offenses and the monthly statistical reports shall include the following. So first is the monthly report of cases handled by the police station. So ibig sabihin, monthly, uh, kinocompute or uh, tinitabular yung mga reported cases in each and every police station para malagay doon sa Uniform Crime Report. Second is supplement on monthly report on cases handled by the police station. Third is report of male persons arrested. So, meron ding report kung ilang lalaki yung naaresto sa police station na yun. And also, for report of females person uh, female persons arrested. Now, let's go to... Ayun. So, yung uniform crime report. So, yung four reports na sinabi ko kanina... Describe shall be submitted to the NAP NAPOLCOM or the National Police Commission. So, ibig sabihin, yung Uniform Crime Reporting or yung Uniform Crime Report ay ipapasa siya sa NAPOLCOM or National Police Commission every 15th of the month. So, ibig sabihin, kada quincenas. And the NAPOLCOM, in return, shall each furnish the NBI, the Chief Director General of the PNP. So, ibig sabihin, tatlong kopya yung ibibigay kay NAPOLCOM. And then, si NAPOLCOM na ang bahalang mag-distribute kay NBI and kay Chief or Director General ng PNP or yung Chief PNP. Accuracy and promptness in the submission of these reports shall be the responsibility of the station commander. Let's go now to Crime Spot Map. So, si Crime Spot Map, it posts the location of murders, rapes, robberies, carnapping, and other major crimes of the locality. So, ibig sabihin naman, ito yung crime mapping kung saan naka-indicate or naka-classify doon kung ano sa uh, specific location na yun, yung talamak, yung a uh, specific offense. So, for example, in the City of Manila, may mapa ng City of Manila, and then naka-classify doon or naka-indicate doon na sa tondo, talamak ang murder and rape. And then sa recto naman, talamak ang robbery. So, through that crime spot map, malalaman agad natin kung ano yung mga uh, high crime reported sa specific location na yun. Ano yung most commonly violated law doon sa specific location. Next is traffic spot map. So from the word itself, traffic spot map, it posts the motor vehicle and pedestrian accident which occur in the area. Kaya minsan may makikita tayo sa mga kalsada ng mga accident prone area because uh, nakalagay ito sa traffic spot map na usually or frequently dito nangyayari yung mga vehicular accident. Next is crime mapping. It is the process of using a geographic information system to conduct spatial analysis of crime problems and other police-related issues. So, ibig sabihin, through the aid of crime mapping, mas matutulungan na ma-analyze ma ng mga law enforcement authorities 
kung paano masolusyonan yung mga crime problems upang makapagbuo sila ng mga crime prevention programs or crime prevention measures para ma-prevent yung uh, occurrence ng crime. So, uh, isa sa mga types ng crime mapping ay yung diniscuss ko kanina which is the crime spot map and the traffic spot map. So, ibig sabihin, pag nakita nila dito na dito sa certain location na ito, mas madaming krimen or crime-prone area ito, of course, they will, uh, uh, they can, rather, they can conduct or they can implement uh, high police visibility in the area. So, mas dadamihan nila ang deployment ng mga police officers in order uh, to prevent or it to create fear to the uh, would-be criminal para gumawa ng krimen. So, in crime mapping, it serves three main functions within crime analysis. So, yung una, it facilitates the visual and statistical analysis of the spatial nature of crime and other type of events. So, syempre, sa crime mapping, uh, makikita natin dito yung illustrated analysis or illustra uh, illustrated information with regards to crime analysis. Kasi mas madali nila makikita, mas mabivisualize nila agad. O, oh, dito sa certain lugar na to, mas maraming krimen dito. At ito ang specific or classification of crime na most committed dito. So, dito naman sa isang lugar na ito, ganito din. So, mas madali nilang masusolusyonan or ma-analyze yung crime problem and therefore, mas mabibigyan nila ng agarang solusyon. Second is, it allows the analyst to link unlike data sources together based on common geographic variables such as linking census information, school information, and crime data for a common area. So usually kasi in crime analysis, hindi lang dito tinitignan kung ano yung crime rate or yung number of crime reported in that certain area. Of course, there are a lot of variables or factors to be considered such as kung gano'n ba kadami ang population dito, kung saan makukuha natin to sa census information, Malalaman din natin sa school information kung sino ba yung mga nakapag-aral or yung nag-aaral in that certain location. So, malalaman natin dito sino yung uh, lugar na onti lang yung nag-aaral or itong lugar na to maraming nag-aaral that can be linked into criminality. And the last one is, it provides the map that help to communicate analysis result. So, syempre sa crime mapping, masusuportahan din kung ano yung magiging produkto ng crime analysis. Now, let's go to, again, the examples of how crime mapping is used within the three types of crime analysis. So, first is tactical crime analysis. So, dito sa tactical crime analysis, crime mapping is used to identify the immediate patterns for crimes, such as residential and commercial burglary, auto theft, and theft from vehicles. So, dito sa tactical crime analysis, di ba, pag na, na kinig natin or narinig natin yung salitang tactical, usually these are for short term or for immediate purposes. And usually, si crime mapping, meron siyang tactical aspect kung saan makikita agad dito at its first glance kung ano yung location na most committed crime or mas ma uh, mataas ang crime reported and also kung ano yung specific or classified crimes na most committed doon sa certain location na yun. Second is strategic crime analysis. So sa strategic, it is a long-term application to analyze the relationship between criminality activity or criminal activity rather and indicators of disorders such as high volume of vacant property or disorder for uh, disorder calls for service. Dito kay strategic crime analysis, mas mataas na or mas malawak na yung factor na tinitignan niya. It is the relationship between the criminal activity or the criminality in the area and its external factors such as yung mga maraming bakanteng uh, lugar which or property which is uh, a type of hazard so also uh, makikita rin dito kung sino yung mga nakapag-aral mga educational attainment and other sociological factors or rather socio-economic factors next is administrative crime analysis in crime mapping kasi, it is a valuable tool for police officers, researchers, media organizations, and other law enforcement authorities to convey criminal activity information to the public. Since crime mapping kasi, uh, kumbaga madali siyang mabivisualize and madali siyang ipakita or gawing pang suporta sa mga crime activities or uh, crime prevention activities na gagawin ng mga law enforcement authorities, researchers, and other media organizations. What are the types of crime mapping? 
So first is single symbol maps. So dito, uh, simple lang yung crime mapping na to kung saan meron siyang individual uniform symbols represent features such as the location of stores, roads, or states. So parang dito may mga palatandaan na tinitingnan na, oh, pag nakita mo itong uh, lugar na to or nakita mo itong establishment na to it is a store. Pag nakita mo to it is a road. Pag nakita mo to it is um, a church. It is a residential house. It is a commercial house. So, yun. Next is buffer. So, sa buffer kasi, it is a specified area around the feature on the map. etong buffer can set all small distances. Kasi nga naman, sa crime mapping, hindi mo naman makukuha yung mismong distansya in the actual distance kasi napakalaki nun. So, ibig sabihin, dito sa buffer, uh, it's just the representation, yung distansya ng each and every uh, structures or uh, property. Next is graduated mapping. So, for graduated mapping, the crime analysis often use graduated maps, that is, Maps in which different sizes or colors of features represents particular values of variables. So, ibig sabihin kay graduated mapping, mas complicated siya or mas uh, detalyado siya at mas maarte siya kumpara natin doon sa single symbol uh, mapping. Next is chart mapping. It allows the crime analysis to display several values within a particular variable at the same time. Density mapping, it anal uh, analysts use point data to shade surfaces that are not limited to area boundaries. So usually, ito naman, hindi siya gumagamit ng mga palat... Uh, ang palatandaan niya doon na ginagamit niya is true shading. Now, let's go to victimology. So who are the persons or who are the pioneers in studying victimology? So first is si Hans von Hentig which uh, nabuhay siya sa 18, uh, 1852 and namatay siya ng 1934. So, Hans von Hentig is one of the pioneers in victimology tried to discover what made the criminal predisposed to being a criminal. So, in his 1941 publication, von Hentig claimed the victim to contribute to the criminal act. So, ibig sabihin, si Hans von Hentig yung nagbukas sa pintuan ng victimology. Ano ba yung... Um, relationship ng biktima or ano yung contribution ng biktima sa criminal act or bakit sila nabibiktima or bakit nagkakaroon ng crime and ano ang relationship ng crime causation sa contribution ng victims. So, victim contribution largely, uh, largely results from characteristics or social positions beyond the control of the individual. So, sinabi niya rin, he used uh, to ask victims, witnesses, and bystanders to complete a detailed and probing questionnaire before preparing a case. So, after examining their responses, Mendelssohn found that usually there was a strong interpersonal relationship between the victims and the offenders. So, usually daw, yung mga victima is merong relationship. Uh, it may be a personal relationship to the offender. That's why sila yung vulnerable na gawing biktima or ma-victimize ng criminal act. Now, let's go to my Benjamin Mendelssohn. So, kay Benjamin Mendelssohn, he is a Romanian lawyer, is often credited as the father of victimology. So, guys, let us uh, remember that the father of victimology is Benjamin Mendelssohn. So, Mendelssohn was fascinated by the dynamics between the victims and the offenders. He used to ask victims, witnesses, and bystanders to complete a detailed and probing questionnaire before preparing a case. So, after examining their responses, Mendelssohn found that usually there was a strong interpersonal relationship between victims and offenders. So, yun yung na-discuss ko kanina. So, uh, again, I'm very sorry, medyo nagkaroon lang ng um, abiria dito sa PowerPoint presentation. So, hindi si Hans von Hentig yung nagsabi or nagbigay ng questionnaire. But it is Benjamin Mendelssohn. So again, uh, Benjamin, Be uh, Benjamin Mendelssohn is the father of victimology. Now let's go to Stephen Scaffer. He revisited victims' role in his bo book, The Victim and His Criminal. He introduced the concept of functional responsibility of the victim. Scaffer modified the typology provided by Hans von Hentig and presented his own classification. Next is Marvin Wolfgang. 
Victim precipitation deals with the degree to which victim is responsible for his or her own victimization. And later on, we will be discussing the victim pre precipitation theory. Sabi ni Walt Gang, using homicide data from the city of Philadelphia, he reported that 26% of the homicide uh, 26% of the homicides that occurred from 1948 to 1952 resulted from victim precipitation. He defined victim precipitated homicide as those instances in which the ultimate victim was the first in the homicide drama to use physical force or violence against his subsequent attacker. Kasi si victim precipitation theory, just to give you an overview, kasi mamaya didiscuss naman natin siya, ito yung parang pinoprovoke uh, ni uh, victim si uh, criminal or si perpetrator in uh, resulting to physical force or violence. So, due to his provocation act, so, nagiging biktima siya ng krimen. So, may dalawa yan kasi the active precipitation and passive precipitation, which we will be discussing again later on. So, Walt Gunn views that connotations of a victim as a weak and passive individual seeking to withdraw from an assaultive situation and an offender as a brutal, strong, and overly aggressive person seeking out his victim are not always correct. Now, let's go to Menachem Amir. So, he examined the concept of victim precipitation through his empirical analysis of rape victims in 1971. Amir concluded from his study of rape victims in Philadelphia that 19% of all rapes were victim precipitated. Amir viewed that the role played by the victims and their contribution of the perpetration of the offense becomes one of the main interests of the emerging discipline of victimology. So, sinasabi rito, the victims are uh, individuals who experience loss, injury, or hardship for any reason. So, crime victim above, uh, as a result of, uh, sabi ng criminologist, uh, criminologists as why certain individuals become involved in lawbreaking while others do not. Well, for victimologists, it asks why individuals, household, and entities are targeted while others are not and why over and over again. So, ibig sabihin, bakit daw uh, kasali ang individuals or bakit may target individuals, household and entities lang na nabibiktima ng krimen at once na nabiktima sila, bakit paulit-ulit na sila lang din yung nabibiktima. Now let's go to our uh, uh, second to the last which is the classifying the different types of victims. So what are the typologies of victims? So the first, uh, the general type is the young. So ito yung mga bata, the weak by virtue of age and immaturity. The female, often less physically powerful and easily dominated by males. The old, the incapable of physical defense and the common object of confidence scheme. The mentally defective, ito yung mga mentally incapable, those that are unable to think clearly. The immigrant, those that are unsure of the rules conduct in the surrounding society. So ito yung mga baguhan sa lugar. So, usually, hindi nila alam yung rules or hindi nila alam yung sistema sa lugar na pinuntahan nila. Therefore, mas madali silang mabiktima. The minorities, racial prejudice may lead to victimization or unequal treatment by the agency of justice. So, minorities, ito yung grupo na oonti lang. Minority versus majority. Next is other types of victims. So, ben, uh, Benjamin Mendelssohn, a European defense attorney, created his own classification of victim types. This includes the following six categories. First is the completely innocent victim, such as person is an ideal victim in popular perception. In this category, place person victimized while they are unconscious and the child victims. So, ibig sabihin, the completely innocent victim, they are not aware of their surroundings and therefore, sila ay na madaling mabiktima because they caught anger. Then. Second, victims with only minor guilt and those victimized due to ignorance or due to katangahan. Number three, the victim who is just as guilty as the offender and the voluntary victim. Suicide cases are common to this category. Fourth, the victim more guilty than the offender. This category was described as containing persons who provoke the criminal or actively induce their own victimization. Ito yung tinatawag natin na victim precipitation. 
Next is the most guilty victim, who is guilty alone. An attacker killed by a would-be victim in the act defending themselves were placed into this category. So, ibig sabihin, namatay yung attacker or yung criminal due to the defensive act of the victim. The imaginary victim, those suffering from mental disorders or those victims due to extreme mental abnormalities. Now, let's go to our last discussion, which is the theories of victimology. So, first is yung victim precipitation theory. So, sinasabi dito that people may actually initiate the confrontation that eventually leads to their injury or death. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung parang provocation. First is active uh, precipitation. Of course, when victims act provocatively or use threats or fighting words or even attack first. So, ibig sabihin dito sa active precipitation, when we say active, ibig sabihin may ginawa kang action. May provocative aka directly to the uh, to the criminal that irated them or provoked them para ikaw ay atakihin. So, usually gumamit ka ng threat or... Uh, Threat or fighting words, gumamit ka ng mga bad words or ng mga insulting words or e you even attack first or una mo siyang sinaktan. As to passive precipitation, of course, when the victim exhibits some personal characteristics that unknowingly at either threatens or encourages the attacker. Dito kay passive precipitation, you are not doing an act directly to provoke the attacker. It's just that you have some, uh, you have a characteristic that irritated them or provokes them. Therefore, magiging biktima ng, mag magiging biktima ka ng kanilang kriminalidad. Now, let's go to the lifestyle theory. Crime is not a random occurrence, but rather a function of the victim's lifestyle. So, an example dito is due to their lifestyle, such as the end demographic makeup. For example, in college campuses, it contains large concentrations of young women who may be at greater risk of rape and other forms of sexual assault than women in the general population. So, dito kasi kay lifestyle theory, uh, it is the manifestation of uh, how good you are or kung ano or paano yung lifestyle mo na maaaring maka-attract kay kriminal para biktimahin ka. So, a good example is, ang lifestyle mo, lagi ka nagsusot ng napakagandang damit, napakagarang damit, lagi kang nagsusot ng alahas, lagi kang may bagong iPhone. So, therefore, uh, ma-attract yung attacker or yung would-be criminal na ikaw ang atakihin or na ikaw ang biktimahin for the crime of robbery. Kasi napakadami mong pera, napakarami mong pwedeng, uh, napakaraming maaaring makuha sa'yo. Next is deviant place theory. So, sinasabi lang dito that the greater their exposure to dangerous places, the more likely people will become victims of crime and violence. So, usually, ito yung mga crime-prone areas and therefore, mas mataas ang victimization dyan kasi mataas ang crime commission. Now, let's go to the dynamics of victimization. There are a number of procedural models which can be applied to the study of the victimization process for the purpose of understanding the, ex the experience the victims. First is victims of crime model. In victims crime model by Bard and Sangi, according to this model, there are three stages involved in any victimization. First is stage of impact and disorganization. Ito yung stage kung saan uh, stage during and immediately following the criminal event. Ito yung stage kung saan ikaw ay during na binibiktima ng criminal or dinanakawan and immediately after ka manakawan. Letter B, stage of recoil. Ito yung stage kung saan yung victim, it formulates psychological defenses, traumas, and deals with conflicting emotions of guilt, anger, acceptance, and desire of revenge. Dito yung nare-realize niya na na nabiktima siya ng krimen and therefore maari siyang magalit sa sarili niya, maaaring i-accept niya na lang na dahil kasalanan naman niya or dahil na nasa crime-prone area siya or maaaring mag-desire siya or mas gustuhin niyang maghiganti. It is said that stage of recoil will last 3 to 8 months. So, matagal-tagal din. And the last one is reorganization stage. It's stage during which the victim puts his or her life back to the normal daily living. So, in short, ito yung moving on process. Some victims, however, may not successfully adopt the victimization experience and a maladaptive reorganization stage may last for many years. So, sa reorganization stage, ito yung moving on stage, acceptance stage. Next is Disasters Victim Model. This model was developed to explain the coping behavior of victims of natural disaster. So according dito sa model na to, there are four stages. First is Pre-Impact. It is the stage described the victim's condition 
prior or before being victimized. Ito namang impact the stage or during the victimization. Si post-impact, it is a stage which entails the degree and duration of personal and social disorganization following victimization. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung pagkatapos na ng mabiktima. And the behavioral outcome, it is the stage that describes the victim's adjustment or ano na yung naging behavior niya prior or bago, pala, ay, after rather, after the victimization, ano yung uh, na-cope up or ano yung nagbago sa kanyang behavior due to its adjustment. Thank you very much and I do hope that you learned a lot from this video discussion with regards to uniform, uh, uniformity of crime report, um, crime mapping, and also uh, regarding victimology. If you love this video, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the professor and hit the notification bell for you to be updated for my next video upload. So if you have any clarifications or questions, feel free to comment it in the comment section. So thank you very much and see you on my next vlog.